Hey guys, it's Agoasi Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because we're gonna go over creating colliders in Unity. There are different type of colliders, different options that we're gonna be using. So I want to show you what they are, how do you use them, how do you resize them, and how would you apply those when you're creating a game. All right guys, so let me go over colliders in Unity. So if I click on the cube, you can see you know anything that is available in the inspector so anytime you want to add a new component to a game object in unity you have this option called a component if i go to this one and i collapse the material you can see i can see a component so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a collider to each one of these and we can go over some of the properties on each collider the other thing that i want to do is the camera is kind of on the way so let's go into gizmos and i'm going to resize that object Let's just make it a little smaller. Perfect. So I'm going to focus on the cube for now. And also, let's change this from an ISO view to a perspective. There we go. Perfect. And the other thing that I want to do, let's actually, uh, you know, put the camera in a way that we can see everything. So I'm going to select the camera and then go to Game Object. Let me do that one more time. And then click on Align, align with View. And we can see basically everything that is that we're seeing on the same view. I want those to match. So the other thing that I'll do is I'm going to select the cube and then let's go over adding colliders. So anytime you want to, you know, detect collisions in a game, either if you, you know, you might be shooting somebody in your game or, or maybe you want to capture when two objects collide or you may want to, you know, if you're creating a platformer, let's say that you, you jump over this and you want to know what type of character is colliding with this so that's when you will use colliders so colliders are, are different types of colliders that you can add so if i select the cube click on component and we type in the word collider you can see that i am getting a bunch of different options so we're not going to be using 2d colliders for now i will cover those in the next videos right now we're going to use 3d colliders per se so you have a box collider that of course is going to be assigned to something like a cube you also have a capsule collider you also have a mesh collider you also have a sphere collider a terrain collider a wheel collider and also i guess this one is for 2d so we can skip that one so what i'm going to do on this one is i'm going to assign the box collider and you can see that as soon as i assign a box collider i get different properties i also get some green lines so if I zoom into this, you can see that I have green lights. So if I disable this collider, you can see that that green goes away. And that means that this is the collider that is attached to this object. The other option that I have, if I select edit, I can also change the collider in the view. So I get these points, which, which look like faces, if you're familiar with 3D modeling. And if I select one of these faces, you can see that I could also, I could change the size of the collider. And that's also changing the center and the size. I could move this up. And what I'm doing on my mouse, let's click on edit one more time, is I'm selecting it and dragging up and dragging down. I could also change the size on, on the other axis. And I'm gonna, let's say that I wanna add it, you know, change the size from the very bottom as well. I could do that as well. And I can do the same thing from the back. So what's going to happen is Unity is detecting a collider from the, you know, from outside of the bounds of the 3D mesh, meaning that anything that collides with it, it's going to detect a collision right with, between those boundaries. So the other thing that I can do is I can, if I wanted to reset the collider, I can click on this, basically the gear option, and then click on reset, and that's going to reset everything that I change. The other settings that I have is I can tell it if this collider is going to be a trigger, or if this collider is not going to be a trigger. So what this means is if I set it to trigger, anything that collides with this is going to go through the object. If I set it, if I, if I set it not to not be a trigger, anything that collides with this is going to stay within the boundaries, meaning that it's going to go, it's not going to go through. So if I have this ball falling down, the ball is going to stay in place and it's not going to th go through the shape. But if I want it, you know, for whatever reason, let's say that this was water, and the ball was falling through water, I want the ball to follow through and not stay on the basically on the top of the water. So that's what the East trigger is for. The, the other thing that I have access to is material, and this is physics materials. I'll go over that in another video. 
And what that allows us to do is if I want to have a material that, let's say that is a bouncing ball, I can change the way that these ma the, the ball is con basically colliding with this other object. And I may want to have that ball bouncing up and down, or I want it to be more rigid. I can change some of the settings on the physics material. For now, we're just going to leave that blank. And of course, we can change the center of the collider. I can also change you know, the y-axis, the z-axis. I can change the size. So let me go ahead and click on reset one more time, and then we can look at the size. I can change it through here, or I can change it through you know, looking at the same view, just like we did initially. So I'm going to click on the gear option again, and then reset. So that covers what a box collider is. Let's go to the sphere now, and click on a component. And we're going to add a, basically a sphere collider. And the settings are going to be very similar, except that now we have a sphere surrounding or a sphere. So, and we also have a radius. So because it's an a sphere collider, it has a radius. And you can see that by changing the radius, I can change the boundaries of the a sphere collider. And I can also change the center. If I want to change the collider center, you know, to be offset on Y, I can change that as well. I can make the collider very, very small. So if I go to, for say, for example, I can I can go to wireframe, and I can look at the collider. You know, it's inside of that ball. If for whatever reason we wanted to have a collider smaller than the sphere, you can do that as well. And to be able to see it, just click on wireframe. I'm gonna go back to shade it, and we're gonna click on the the gear option here, and then click on reset. And just like we did before, we have an ease trigger. We also have a material. And I already show you the offset. I can also click on Edit Collider and, and basically modify it through the view to the scene view, just like I did with the other one. And that also works. So I'm going to go back into my gear option and then click on Reset. Perfect. So that covers a Sphere Collider. Now let's go into our capsule and we're going to click on Add Component. And you can see that I can now uh, as well add a capsule collider. And very much like the Sphere Collider and the Cube Collider, I have an Edit Collider option that I can change through, you know, through the scene view. And it looks like that's getting that modification there. I can also select the point on the top and change the side of that. I can go up and down if I wanted to. And I also have a Trigger option, just like we did on the other ones, a Material, Physics Material option, also a Center Offset, just like we did on the other one. And on this one, I have a radius. I could change the radius. I also can change the height, just like I did just a few minutes ago. And I can also change the direction. So if I wanted to change the axis direction, looks like that is changing. So you can see that, that it's basically facing X, which is a red axis over here. And if I wanted to change it on, let's say on Z, I could change it on Z. And you can see that that's going in that direction. And Or I can go back to X and then you know, let's actually click on the gear and then reset it so that we have it back to where we had it. So that is the capsule collider. Let's go into our cylinder. And for the cylinder, there isn't a cylinder collider. The reason for that is because you can use the capsule collider. So it's going to be very similar to the other one where you have, you know, we might be missing a little bit of the collision here, but you can adjust this. So if I go back into my cylinder and we can change the radius. We can change the height, and perfect. So that, that covers that one as well. I'm going to click on the gear, and then hit reset. So if you really wanted to, let's say that you didn't want to have a little, you know, a little curvature here on the collider, you wanted to collide all the way, you can also combine the colliders. You can, you know, you can have a capsule collider on this one. Let's go into wireframe so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Let's say that I wanted to add another collider in here. And for some reason, let's say I wanted to change the height of this one to be more like 1. Point, yeah, yeah, 1 1.38. And I also wanted to have another collider. Say I wanted to have a box collider. Of course, you can change the Y here, the size on Y. I can offset it, and I can set it to something like that. I can go on the top, go into or autographic view, and you can see that now I have a, colli a collider on the top. And, and that it's really going to help you if you if you really want to be precise you can have of course a box collider on the top on this one and i can also duplicate this box collider so i'm going to say copy component click on it again and then paste component as new and that's going to duplicate the box collider 
And what I can do is I can say I can move that one down. And now we have a collider. Basically, we have a top collider, which is a box collider, one on the bottom, which is another box collider, and then we have the inner one, which was our capsule collider. So I could also change the height if I wanted to be more precise. And that should actually cover you know every area. Of course, we have a little bit of a gap, but you're you know you're more than welcome to tweak this until you're happy with the changes. Perfect. So that covers you know adding multiple colliders. So now if we go into our plane, I'm going to double click it so that we can focus on it. So by the way, if you wanted to go to the cube, you can double click the cube here and it's going to put it in view. I can click on the plane. I can also click on the cube and then hold and then basically press the F key, which is going to take me to that area. So we'll be covering a lot of these different shortcuts as we go through more sessions. So if I go into the plane, I can also do the same thing here. And in this one, I'm going to add a mesh collider. And you can see that I have a mesh collider added. Let's go back into shade it and go into our mesh and our plane here. And in this one, I have different settings. I have a convex setting. If, if this is going to be a convex or not, I can't, I can't tell it whether it's going to be a trigger or not. Looks like that option is not available. Then you also have some different options. And just FYI, the mesh colliders are very, very performance heavy. So be careful when you're adding those, especially if you have a very complicated you know, mesh. In this case, it should be fine because it's just a plane. But what I would do instead of adding a mesh collider on this one, I would probably add a cube collider and just make it pretty thin. And then, but I just wanted to show you that that's also available. You can also tell it what the physics material is going to be, and you can also tell it what the mesh is going to be. Perfect. And also for the quad, we could do the same thing. In this case, I could, you know, I could say this is going to be a box collider and you can see that that worked perfectly. It actually sized the collider perfectly for me. And looks like that's all working. And I'm not going to cover some of these settings because they're going to be the same settings that we went through in the other, you know, in these, in these different shapes. So that basically wraps up colliders. And I'm going to go through in more detail about colliders in other se sections where we're actually going to see colliders working with physics and how we can change some of those settings to, dif to affect physics and how the game objects can interact with each other. So that's everything for now, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share this video.